Now, as we say on Potatoes Gang, we are back. And we're in the final stretch. We want to talk about uh, one or two things. And if it is also possible, I'd like for us to find five minutes to get the health team to give us a final submission, just five quick minutes. Uh, however, I want to talk national unity, uniting Nigeria. One of the lead-offs in the Obidachi promise to Nigeria is that we will secure and unite Nigeria. What are the impediments to national unity? I have from Kanu, Nasser Sidi Ali. Nasser, are you there? Um, we have the DG of the Big Tent Independent Campaign Council. Um, Abdul Karim. And we've got the DG of the Presidential Campaign Council. Uh, Balogu, are you there? Somebody let me know who of you is hiding behind the cameras and who of you are Hello, actually up there. I'm here. <laughs> oh, you're there. Okay, Mr. DG. The yes, big sir. question yeah. of how we offer this promise of uniting Nigeria. What are the things, what have, in this campaign, I find that you know, some people who should be statesmen who are running, I expect that the first thing that should strike them is how we bring people together, we create a bond. Uniting Nigeria is a very critical uh, a thing for us to be able to make progress. Um, but in, in many ways, what I hear is actually things that divide us. What should we be doing to unite Nigeria? Well, it's, uh, uh, thank you for having me. I think the first thing maybe uh, we can start with is that you think of how some of them become our presidential candidates in so-called other parties. For example, uh, you can look at the tickets. Some of the tickets are not even giving us that confidence for uniting Nigeria. If you put up your ticket, a ticket after a northerner, a Muslim, now you pick up a ticket and say you are going to the south. You bring another Muslim and then use another Muslim to make a Muslim Muslim ticket. That alone, you understand, is not thinking towards uniting Nigeria. And when you ask people around the Dasan the party, what do you hear from them? They say a strategy to win. You can't win and rule over a divided nation. The first thing is that you're supposed to think as a party, coming out of what we are already receiving from this uh, uh, APC government, the first thing can major parties and any other parties are supposed to be doing is that thinking of how do we bring a system that we take from the party primaries that we are going to have within ourselves to start uniting people from our party and then take the, this unity to Nigerians. But all of them, they ignore that. For example, APC, APC ignore that do their Muslim Muslim ticket. And also PDP on her own side too, ignore that. I say, okay, no problem. We are going to put a planning person, so we're going to be planning. Come on, the worst part of this side is that because if to say maybe uh, it's a free and fair election that they have done within their system and they created what they created for themselves. But this one is glaring and at, at the eve of the election, dollars flying. Uh, everybody just use money just to buy. So that's mean. Is something that they can do to help the country. If they can use money within their own system to create who become the next president, then that means they can use the same money, you understand, or the same sense that they have to see what is going to start uniting this country. But I think all of them ignore that and just uh, live to the system that let them just move. But you look at our own ticket. The ticket of... Uh, hello? When they are sharing money, they usually don't remember that you come, you are Yoruba, you are Hausa, you are Kanuri, you are Igbo. They share the money amongst yes. themselves properly. <laughs> yes, sir. But when it comes to so, governing, to they politics. remember yeah. or seeking power. Yeah, you are this place, you are mm. that place. This way. Yes. So, but if you look at our own ticket now, for example, sir, you see our ticket, well balanced. Somebody from the south, a Christian, somebody from the north, a Muslim coming together to challenge us. 
and thank God for the ticket, thank God for our candidate. So it makes it very easy for people like us when we go out in the north to, to advocate for this uh, uh, ticket or to call people to, to join us in this uh, movement. We tell them the truth. We tell them that there is nothing you can do. You can't, there is no country that can move forward unless you unite the country. And I give them a small example. I said, God has given us everything we want as a country. Everything. From the fertile land, to mineral resources, to uh, uh, very beautiful, uh, uh, intelligent people. Anywhere, any, any day, you can be proud of Nigeria to, to excel in what they are doing. But what we like is that God just asks us. Because in Islam, for example, it's a verse of the Quran that said that I have created you a male and female into tribe and nation. To Arifu, that's to, to the reason God said in the Quran is that for you to know each other. Every Imam in the north, every Malan that you know, knows about this. This is one of the most beautiful ayat in the Quran. The reason why God created us into different nations is for us to know each other. So if some people, because they want to join a system, or they want to rule, or they want to govern, or they want to take over, they just divide and rule. So that's what they call for me, year in, year out, every four years. So thank God, uh, from Friday today, we have a series of TV programs, two, two hours with call-in. We did radio programs, four radio programs. Freedom Radio, we have an audience of almost getting to nine million people. So if you take, uh, uh, we are going to do Negarta tomorrow in the morning. So what we are just doing, all the programs we have on radio and TV up here in the north, it is just to tell them that this is what this ticket is bringing to us. This is what Mr. Peter Obi is promising us. And the main beneficiary of his government will be the north. Because he said the most important physical asset in this country is the vast land in the north. So if you are talking about consumption to production, definitely North is going to play the vital role in trying to get that transition. So and this, and this, what we need to do is that, sir? I was going to say, this is not just in agriculture. In terms of yes. the power that we're talking about, the yes. North is where a good part of solar power can be generated for our country. Yeah. There's also a lot of hydropower possibilities in the North. So as we organize we have, ourselves... We have, properly, the we have, benefits will be spread across our country. Of course. We, we have what is called dead dams. Hmm. Dams that are not even adding any value to anybody. Hmm. In the north, we have almost getting to 200 dams in the north. Some of them we call them dead dams because there is not even irrigation by the dams. Talkers are putting them to, to, to the use. So, I see opportunity. I see a new Nigeria. I see a new thinking. This is what we are selling to the Northerners. And I always tell people, we'll be very, very surprised to see the amount of votes that are going to come from the North. Because it's very easy to sell this idea. Because you are selling unity. You are selling something that at least can push us, all of us together to create the new Nigeria of our dream. But because if we keep on going to the side, talking to people based on division, for example, the way we see other people going to other places and telling them, uh, in Hausa, that means that you get somebody from your own part of the country to vote for him. Even that person is just going to be one of the worst people that can govern. You understand? But we have to explain to our people that this unity is very, very important because up in the north, we have more of the tribes in the north than in the southern part of the country. If we have uh, two-thirds of, uh, of the tribes that we have in the they belong to the north. And also, if you see the mixing of the Christian and Muslim, they're up here in the north. So, is the north that have almost all the crises, tribal classes, yeah. uh, crises, and Akiyan, also Akiyan, Akiyan Shuntoku, Let's take Akio his perspective on how we can unite Nigeria and be able to really truly make progress from this unity. Aki? Um, it, all, it all comes back to science. You know, science proceeds from the premise of a worst case scenario, not the best case. Now, we, if you want to apply that philosophy to, I mean, that pre, you know, uh, premise to Nigeria, it was not on that basis 
that we are the con constitution we are at independence. In other words, you look at all what can go wrong in Nigeria politically, you know, no and no ramifications, and then engineer a uh, you know an entity or create an entity that will be as much as possible, you know, uh, foolproof that will be risk proof to that to those kind of environments. Now look, there must be a presumption of mindlessness. I also believe that those who frame the independence constitution uh, that, that we can throw it away and not have the kind of consequences we are in today. Now, you see, Nigeria is a systemic crisis. Ironically, Nigerians were more united in the first republic than at any other phase of, in this country, regardless of whether the, the North was the stronghold of uh, Amadou Bello or whatever. When I was growing up, we had my, we had the holy, one of the long holidays that we had, we went to Bagalda Lake Hotel from Ibadan, right? Nobody knew, you see. So the thing is this, you can't force a cohabitation and you can't presume, as I said, you cannot presume, you go from the premise that all that can go wrong. Right now, the opposite is the case. When you have an all-powerful president with the power to discriminatorily apply patronage, cause divide and rule, right? This is what we have got. This emphasis of over-centralization of power, where people have said it, I've not confirmed it yet. Uh, Nigeria's president is the most, pres most powerful president in the world. That should not happen in, in any society. It is antithetical to what Nigeria ought to be because unless you have an angel, or for instance, you can get you know, somebody like Obasanjo continuously as the president of Nigeria, that is the only way you can hope that Nigeria can unite under this present constitutional order. Right. So long as you don't, I mean, you know all the things that you know go into making a person do what he is. So it's very difficult to replicate. We have been living with the consequences of, and as a matter of fact, the eight years that was that he was president, you could see that there was a recession of disunity, right? Signaling a lot, just mere signaling, can go a long way. You see the front of the newspapers when he was president. He was being accompanied to the, uh, to, to the, to the airport by Aliko Dangote, by Donald Duke, by, you know, all sorts of people around. So it, it makes people yeah, feel a sense of, wondered. you know, come, you know, <laughs> belonging. That way it's a, like a, a big family. You know, you go to the villa when he was president. You develop friendship with some people who are not from your side of the country, like a brother. I mean, some people become you become practically like you know. So, but you cannot get the Basanjo again. You know, cannot replicate him, right? What you have had is what the kind of what, what what is possible, and to show us the dysfunctional nature of what we have with regards to national unity is the president we have today, who has the power and he has applied it in a way that disunites the country, that is divisive, right? So... Uh, out of time, so we have to uh, round up. Um, we, I, I wanted us to take a conclusion, a three, five minute conclusion from the health team, uh, who I think didn't present the conclusion, but I don't know if the, the juggling acts can work well together. The key is that, you know, since noon, we have been working at articulating why Obi Dati is Tina. Using, of course, Tina is there is no alternative. Using facts in the manifesto of the Labour Party to engage. We've had a remarkable run of conversations here. What is important 
It's not only that you support this process through what's been coming up on your screen, but that everyone who really believes that a new Nigeria is desirable and is possible should make the effort to knock on their neighbor's door to say, are you voting right? Do you have your PVC? If you have your PVC and this is the way to go, LP and that index finger and a new Nigeria becomes possible. Canvas, bring out your neighbor, get them to vote, and police the vote. There's so much that's already coming out showing the wrong things. People are complaining all over the place that they're getting new assignments away from where their polling booths are, and they think that it's a deliberate ploy. We're going to explore all of that and find out whether that is true. People are still, you know, not able to collect their voters, uh, their PVCs, these are all issues that go to disenfranchising the Nigerian people. We must make sure this is a real democracy, that people are not disenfranchised and that people vote their conscience and that violence not be used for voter suppression and that all kinds of terrible machinations to finagle the system stop. Let the will of the people happen and you will get progress. If not, we are stuck in this vicious cycle. And Nigeria will remain the poverty capital of the world and the butt of jokes around the world. Let's make democracy work for Nigeria. Nigeria can and will rise up again. Recording, recording.